that often yield problems weeping and hard times and believers in the household of faith need a reality check Believers have found that their social, economic, and political in dealing with problems can be benefited by prayer. I think I told you either last night or the night before that if you're going to be dressed for battle if you're going to be tested and be successful your life must be seasoned with prayer. Let me remind you. Pray wherever. Pray whenever. Pray for whatever. That's what the last three verses in Habakkuk is telling us. It's a dialogue between Habakkuk and God. He's facing some social, economic, and political problems. And instead of giving in to his failings and flaws, Habakkuk says, I want to be a role model that I can pray myself out of my problems. There are two key words in the text that drive this topic. They are although and yet. Yes. And based on them, now I state my sermon in the following sentence. Praying out of your problem is your God given method. For living productively rather than as a victim. Here's the first of three points. One, praying out of your problems. Acknowledges life's problematic nature. In America, I remember a saying. You can't live with them and you can't live without them. What he was talking about is people. People can be the best that they can be. But more often than not, it's people who create problems. And because you join the church, or accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Jesus Christ You're not exempt from problems. Problems in the morning. Problems in the afternoon. Problems at night time. As we anticipate the next day, we contemplate 
problem. Right, to a year day or china on your bay to none so how bang or china bebremi. Problems find us. Now they feel on for your how for how you show. And we create problems. But I don't want to describe that. I want to tell you how you can pray out of your problems. Here's point number two. Praying out of your problems. Brow bomb pie or pie woman or how woman involves putting God's ability over your inability. Actually, you know, I can't say that you didn't, you mean, you didn't be cool. How no chance say you didn't have a hard in the corn. Just an excerpt from two verses in Habakkuk. Now, oh, you can't say you have a bad to the crown seven more. Habakkuk three and Habakkuk twelve. Habakkuk chapter three, verse twelve. It says, God came. From Teman. I see a rabbi. In verse 12, it says, Thou didst march through the land. I see Abu Huru Muna, one now far as I saw. That's Habakkuk's way of saying God has always worked in the past. That's what gives me confidence to pray in the present. I bet my wife to saw the way let me give you a New Testament example. In Mark chapter 9, 1 to 23. Here's the summation of it. Jesus is transfigured. Yes, we are here not for you, Mokasro. He takes the inner circle of Peter, James, and John. Now, bro, of course, I strand us on all day. Peter and the James and the Bible can hook on. And in vision, they see Moses and Elijah. What is what I do? I'm going to go home, Moses and Elijah. Peter is so overwhelmed. Now, Peter, yeah, yeah, and he did kiss your pa. That he says, shouldn't we make uh, tabernacles here for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. Elijah and Moses. A cloud overshadows them. And for the second time during Jesus' public ministry, the Father speaks. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. And that's what prayer is really about. It's not about rituals and ceremonies. And it's not about specially published prayer books. It's about somebody who's in the midst of a problem and needs the supernatural intervention of God to get out of it. Let me tell you the rest of the story. While Jesus was up on the mountain being transfigured, the other disciples were down in the valley. And a gentleman from the community had come with his sick son. Now, I encourage you to read this passage at your own leisure. God's trying to teach us a lesson. Well, when Jesus comes down, the man and the crowd run to Jesus. The man says, I brought my sick son to your disciples. But they couldn't help it. Understand that these are the same disciples who a few chapters earlier 
Jesus had sent out by two. Yes, They came back with their evangelistic report. Now They had healed the sick. They had expelled demons. But since then, something had been lost. It's because when we join church, we think that we've done all we need to do. Christians have problems too. In fact, I believe Christians might have more problems. The devil doesn't want to let you go. I believe he's had a meeting on you. If you're on the top of his agenda. He probably said, McClary, you thought you got away. But like Job, I'm going to create problems in your life. When Jesus had the disciples privately. They asked him the question. How come we could not cast that demon out? Jesus said this. Now This kind goeth out but by prayer and fasting. The devil's not going to let you go. He's not going to let your family go. He's not going to let Ghana go without putting up a devilish fight. But if you are aware of God's ability, that can make your inability triumphant victorious delivering salvation liberating then you need to pray out of your problem. Here's the third and final point. Praying out of your problem is confirmed and ratified by trusting God and His resume. In chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, chapter 1, 12 and 13, no? It says, Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God? Okay, Thou art of purer eyes than behold than to behold evil. What Habakkuk was asking and God responded. Is that praying out of your problem is a matter of God's application of justice. There's a text in Romans 8 28. All things work together for good. Who love God to them who are called according to his purpose. I hear you and I see you scratching a hole in your head. Ask and preach, I'm not sure that really works. But let me testify from personal experience that what the devil meant for evil the Bible is filled with case study 
with people on their way to the graveyard. When they prayed, God turned it around. What Habakkuk is saying. Don't just describe your problem. Pray to God about your problem. And he will apply his justice to your situation. Justice is about fairness. Justice is about righteousness. And when you pray, God is going to get you out of your problem by the application of justice. But it's also his objective to put your life your family and society this entire world back together again and so Habakkuk climaxes his prophecy after talking about what he thought was unfair treatment why would you use those heathen Chaldeans you seem like that's not fair, Lord. Habakkuk kept asking and kept praying. And he comes to the same conclusion that other Bible writers have come to. He ends his prophecy on a crescendo. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stall. What I hear Habakkuk say. Although my husband or my wife walk out on me. Although my children disrespect me. My employer of government mistreat me. My family turns its back on me. Here's what Habakkuk says. Yes, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds. He will make me to walk upon mine high places. Or pray out of your problem. It's God's method. For taking your fiery furnace and taking the fire and heat out of it. It's God taking Goliath and whittling down with a young shepherd boy. It's God taking the jawbone of an ass. Now the G is a man in Iron and beating the outnumbered Philistine. Now a far sovereign take it to our way so a put your Philistine. It's God becoming a locksmith. 
and locking the lion's jaw. Psalm 46, 10. Psalm 46, verse 10, Isaiah 11, 9. Isaiah 11, verse 9, so Are two other verses that said God eventually is going to get you out of your situation. By the time we get the Revelation 21. John the Revelator. John. Says that he saw a new heaven and a new earth where all problems are past. Oh, I look forward to that day. That while I still got to deal with a hungry lion. Walking about seeking whom he may devour. But if I would just pray. Keep on praying. Pray without ceasing. Pray wherever. Whenever. For whatever. God would get me out. Of my pray out of your problem. As we close tonight, is another appeal. Only out of the sincerity of your heart. 